by any wavelength. That is how black holes are formed. And that's a journey into the life of a dying star. Oh, I didn't see you there. Come on in. My friend Elaine and I were just having a conversation about interstellar physics, but we were about to talk about one of our favorite shows, the sci-fi classic Doctor Who, which has been running for over 50 years. It is about an alien, the Doctor, who looks like a human, but he can live for a very long time. And the trick is, whenever he's seriously injured, he regenerates and puts on a new face and looks different. He has a spaceship, the TARDIS, that looks like a blue telephone box that travels through space and time, and he often travels with companions, just trying to help people on different planets or spaceships. Today, Elaine and I are here to talk about some of our favorite clips from Doctor Who. And this time, we're breaking from the tradition of having a theme, and we're just picking what's the favorite to us and see what conversation that sparks. And so, I will go first. I'm excited to see what Elaine thinks. She does not know what clip I've chosen, so it's a total surprise. So let's get to it and watch. Just tell him, River. Those reports of the sunspots on the solar flares, they're wrong. There aren't any. It's not the sun. It's you. The sky's full of a million, million voices saying, yes, of course, we'll help. You've touched so many lives, saved so many people. Did you think when your time came, you'd really have to do more than just ask? You've decided that the universe is better off without you, but the universe doesn't agree. River, no one can help me. A fixed point has been altered. Time is disintegrating. I can't let you die. Oh, I have to die. Shut up! I can't let you die without knowing you are loved by so many and so much and by no one more than me. River, you and I, we know what this means. You know, we are ground zero of an explosion that will engulf all reality. Billions on billions will suffer and die. I'll suffer if I have to kill you. More than every living thing in the universe. And that's our clip. That one has been a favorite of mine for years. And it's one starring the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, where he's with his friend, uh, River Song, played by Alex Kingston. And they're in this dilemma where uh, time is disintegrating, uh, history has been changed, and the Doctor wants to sacrifice himself for the common good. And River Song, just wants to do anything. She doesn't matter the cost to, to save her friend, the doctor. Were you surprised by the clip? I was, yeah. Yeah, I had forgotten about that scene until mm -hmm. you played it, and then I remembered like how beautiful it is. And that line where she says, yeah. Like when he asked, would you be in more pain than every living creature in the universe? I was like, oh, that's love. I like that. I think it's it's just a really good example of love. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah. parts that stuck out to me were one when she said that there was like all these other um, like spaceships coming of yeah. of races wanting to to support the doctor when she's letting him know it's you were mm -hmm. loved by so many and so much and by no one more than me. Mm -hmm. And then um, also that that idea of you know where she was like yes, like, I'll, I'll suffer mm -hmm. if you're gone. She's really, between the two of them, they're really torn between, like, a connection and, like, what's right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, what's the right thing to do and what, what sacrifices um, would be made in that. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I just, I really like their, their connection and their, yeah. their dynamic, their, I don't know it's it's not simple it's it's complicated and they're they're both stubborn but they both work <laughs> together <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah they are both really strong-willed and really determined and really strong people mm -hmm. yeah. and they're not doing something out of you know it's like oh I'm just doing this on a on a whim they have mm -hmm. thought out like yeah. well, 
I'm doing this. I'm, I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to, to save you. Mm -hmm. River cares about the doctor, but then the doctor's mm -hmm. like, I, that's impractical. You can't just, <laughs> uh, you can't just um, sacrifice everything for me. Mm -hmm. And I think part of what hits me in that is that just his view of himself. He does, mm. he's like, I, I don't matter enough mm. that, that every, everything should, <laughs> should perish yeah. for me. Yeah. And so I think for me that resonates with my heart because I think mm. of, you know, of identity and when we think, um, are we worth it? Or do the people around us value us or love us? And um, I even, it almost, um, hits me of like a relationship between um, God and, and person. Mm -hmm. When River says, um, you know, it's like, you are loved by so many and so much and no one more than me. Mm -hmm. That really hits me of just, it's mm -hmm. like, where well, we are in communities and we have friends with people who love us. And no matter how sweet that is, just the relationship of God's love for us is so much more. So I like this clip because I feel like it 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 gives a really um, poignant example of an ethical dilemma mm. that probably has no good answer. Mm. So I'm kind of curious what you think about yeah. that. Like, um, yeah, it's it's about sacrifice. Yes. And um, so, what do you think the doctor should do? I think just off a gut gut reaction, my first instinct is I kind of side with the doctor. It's like mm. no matter how much you love me, it's it would be preposterous <laughs> like for for everything in all creation to, to be obliterated for yeah. to save to save me. Um, you know, but um and not saying that I think that that rivers rivers right, but you can see um She's come from a past where she was stolen from her parents. Mm. She was raised by people yeah. who brainwashed her to <laughs> to assassinate the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and so him being a constant to her is a is a very big deal. Yeah. Um, she's been the he's been the center of her world basically her whole life. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and that he knows no matter whenever they meet up, even if they're in different spots on the timeline, mm -hmm. just that, that presence there and that yeah. just his identity and yeah. there's stuff that will always, right. always be there. So it is, it is kind of one of those, yeah, those ethical dilemmas mm -hmm. where I, I would, I, I probably would side with the, the doctor initially, mm -hmm. but in that I would, like I wouldn't say that how Rivers acting would make her like a like a bad person yeah. or or a villain. Yeah. Um, you know her motivations are are love and like you could you could see her actions as both selfish and not selfish mm -hmm. because she wants yeah. to keep the doctor alive, but she's doing it to keep she wants to keep the doctor alive. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't know what the outcome is. She. Mm -hmm thinks that's that's the end as far as mm -hmm. my knowledge and she could be thinking it's like how many billions of lives is he going to save right. by being being alive so there's like a, a selfishness and a selflessness at the same time which right. is interesting i think in all those ethical dilemmas it's it's hard to things aren't black and white they're gray yeah and um i know it's interesting because obviously there, it wasn't shown in the clip, but there's like people were, or aliens were coming up to try to stop them. Like they were under pressure. And so they were trying to make the best decisions mm -hmm. that they could at the time. And I know it's the same in life. It's like so much of us, <laughs> it's like, okay, I need to make this really important ethical decision. And I don't <laughs> have time to, to think it all out yeah. and perspectives change, but it's like you mm -hmm. make the, best decision that you can yeah. at the moment with the information you have. You might have more information later, but you might not have later. You might have to make yeah. it now. Yeah. 
Makes so sense. how about you? Where, where do you, you lean on there? Well, I really identify with River mm-hmm. because I feel, you know, like when you love someone, you like, it, it hurts your heart. Like mm-hmm. it physically hurts your heart to think mm-hmm. of something happening to mm-hmm. them. And so I understand the pain that she's experiencing, mm-hmm. but I, I have to ultimately, I think I, I agree with you. Like, mm-hmm. um, the greater good outweighs the pain of one yeah what is it spock says that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few yes so or like um i know there's this one um when you talk about ethics and moral dilemmas there's the like guy with the train you know yes and the, the trolley tra- problem yes <laughs> Where it has to go, like, does it does it go towards his daughter or whatever, or do all the people die? Yes. I'm like, that's, that's rough. And so I feel yeah. like this is a really kind of a similar situation. It is. Where time, yeah, time is a really big element. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think like you mentioned earlier, like, there are consequences to both. There are merits. Yeah. There's, you know, it's... Um, there's good in both it's like so what do you what do you choose and what's it like to be in a position where you have that responsibility like they're not just making choices for themselves in their life in their future they're making decisions that affect the people in in their universe universe. in their yeah (laughs) and so that I cannot imagine that. <laughs> I know. It kind of blows my mind. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're right. Like, the doctor is so, um, I mean, the doctor has saved the universe so many times. Yeah. I have lost count. Yeah. And so I can see how River would say, we can't lose you. Yeah. Because you're the one who saves us every time. Yeah. So it kind of, there is kind of a logical. Yeah consistency in her argument plus it's like plus i love you yes so i see where she's coming from yeah. too. but yeah i it, don't feel like there's a good clear answer yeah and you saying that even um it makes me think of river has lived less time mm. and so she has a different perspective yeah. where the doctors lived a, a very long time at this point i think a little over a thousand years mm. um wow and so I might be wrong on that, but I think that's what it was at. Mm -hmm. And so you wonder if he got to this point where it's like, I can get into these gray areas. Mm -hmm. I just need to have this standard that I stick by and just no matter what, just gut reaction. It's like, no, we need to save every, Mm -hmm. everyone else. I wonder if he like built in Mm -hmm. the character built in safeguards of just, it's like, I can't think this through and I can't think of other things. I just Mm -hmm. need to choose Mm -hmm. the, the greater good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because just this week I was um, talking to a gentleman who was telling me that they, they've they researched successful people. Mm. And one of the things that they have found is that people who are successful make decisions quickly and then they, they seldom change them. Mm. So they make a decision and then they stick with it. Mm. And people who are not as successful tend to make decisions slowly, and then after they make a decision, they tend to change their mind more quickly. Gotcha. And I thought, oh dear. <laughs> this does not bode well for me. <laughs> me too. Yes. Because I, I do, I tend to be really, I, it, I struggle with decisions because I'm afraid, like, what if I make the wrong decision? Mm-hmm. And like, um, what if the whole world falls up my my whole world falls apart because yeah. I chose the wrong thing or I miss I miss my destiny or I miss my purpose or I end up in the wrong place or yeah. I don't you know end up you know where I'm supposed to be and it yeah. seems like so much pressure yeah and I thought man I really need to think about how I make decisions because I don't think I'm doing it correctly mm. So, yeah, and I don't know what the answer is, but it just right. really got me thinking. And what you're talking about, about this clip, reminds me of that. Because, mm-hmm. like, they had a very limited time. They had to make a split-second decision, essentially, about the, um, for the whole universe. Yeah. And so, like, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I think sometimes there's a lot of, 
pressure on us to to be perfect and to make perfect decisions and yes i don't think that's necessarily necessary that we put that on ourselves right watching the doctor through the series i feel like he has to <laughs> course correct um a lot and there are different versions where he's comes across as more confident mm -hmm. as than others mm -hmm. i think in this clip yeah. he comes across as confident like i know what's right he also comes across to me as uh, there's almost like an anger there mm -hmm. and i don't know if that is like why are you putting me in this <laughs> position why are you making it yeah. harder or maybe yeah. he's doing that to distance himself because it's like mm -hmm. i care for you too but wow. it's like everyone else the life of everyone else in all creation yeah. is more important and so it's interesting in that where river kind of i don't know she tends to be more open and she's willing to say it's like it's when he, the doctor asks like is it worth it every mm -hmm. everything suffering and she's like to me yeah it is and so she's just being open she's not trying to really make any apologies she's saying this is how i'm feeling yeah. i'm just letting you know and you can tell it's genuine she has yeah. tears in her her eyes and you can just tell from her expression that yeah. when she says that she'll suffer it's like no that's mm -hmm. that's real mm -hmm. that's so good john yeah yeah i love her humanity just the way um she's just authentic yeah it that really touches my heart yeah and that's something that's sometimes hard to do. Like, I feel like the doctor is almost trying to be superhuman. Mm -hmm. Of course, he is an alien. <laughs> <laughs> Figuratively speaking. Um, but, yeah, that's something I've really been learning lately, is how to um, be in touch with my feelings and mm -hmm. acknowledge them, even if they're not pretty or even if they're not... Um, I don't know, culturally acceptable or considered acceptable by the circle I'm in, by my, even my, by my, you know, spiritual life, my, you know, because it's like, if you don't acknowledge something, you're not going to heal it. Mm -hmm. So if you just push things down, yeah, they don't go away. No. So I love her, her just authenticity to say, this is really how I'm feeling. And maybe it looks selfish, but this is this is the real me, and I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna yeah. acknowledge, and I'm not gonna shame myself for how I'm feeling or what I want. And I think that's so key, and that's something that's sometimes so hard to do. Yeah. And um, and I'm finding that the more I walk in that kind of authenticity, the more freedom I'm finding, and the more yeah. healing I'm finding. So yeah. that just really strikes me about River in this in this scene yeah. is just how real and human and raw she is and unafraid to show that and be yeah. that and just say this is where i am you know yeah they had a, they had rapport and trust yeah and they were safe for each other to be authentic right and negotiate like well this is how i'm feeling well this is how i'm feeling yeah and maybe if they didn't feel that safety and they wouldn't have you know, so said what they were really feeling, mm. that could have affected the decision. I wonder if mm. that authenticity mm -hmm. helped them to move forward mm -hmm. in a in a good direction for the greater yeah. good, even though it seemed like from those perspectives that it, it could have gone the other way, just like it was good for River to have that courage because it's like if she pretended that that things you know didn't bother her mm -hmm. it's like maybe they wouldn't have had the yeah. resolution that they that they came to and i've heard um, because i'm not the one who originated this idea i've listened to some teaching that's talked about this since it's really challenged me but i've heard that once you start offering compassion to yourself you stop shaming and judging yourself and you get curious about what's going on instead and and just have compassion but then you become more compassionate and loving with other people. Yeah. But when you judge yourself and shame yourself, then you're going to be more likely to do that with other people too. Yeah. And so I just find that interesting because I really want to love other people well. Yeah. Um, but it starts, I think, with how we treat ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think if if we have a overflow of love that's pouring into us and we're mm-hmm. receiving that, then that spills out yeah. and that's that's how we can treat mm-hmm. other people. Yeah. You know, like like what you're you're saying. It's mm-hmm. like that how we look at ourselves does so greatly affect how we how we treat others. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so thankful for I'm just so thankful for God who loves me unconditionally. Yeah. Like I don't have to perform. Yeah. So there's someone even on my worst days yeah. when I'm feeling like I am the biggest jerk I know. It's like but there's somebody who loves me even mm-hmm. in that place. Mm-hmm. It's like so precious to just fall back into his arms and be like, thank you for loving me, even though right now I feel like a terrible person. Mm. Like it's just really a precious gift yeah. to have that. And it shows you that that love is real. It's not a love that will get, God's love isn't in a way that it will get scared or frightened and, yeah. and run away. It's yeah. authentic. I enjoy talking about that. I couldn't yeah. have imagined the conversation that it would, would spark and where we were able to go. That was fun. That was fun. Thank you for picking that. You're and sharing welcome. It. Thank you for your thoughts. And that was a lot of fun talking about uh, my clip and seeing where the conversation led. Let's take a look at Elaine's clip. I can't die here. Don't say that. It was so beautiful. I'm sorry. Help him. If time energy catches up with you, you'll never have been born. It will erase every moment of your existence. You will never have lived at all. Amy, move away from the light. If it touches you, you'll be wiped from history. Amy, move away now. No, I'm not leaving him. We have to help him. The light's already around him. We can't help him. I am not leaving him. We have to. No. I'm sorry. Get off me. I'm sorry. Get off me. Like, if this body's absorbed, I'll forget him. He'll never have existed. You can't let that happen. What are you doing? Keep him in your mind. Don't forget him. If you forget him, you'll lose him forever. No way on the Byzantium. I still remember the clerics because I am a time traveler. Now you say They weren't part of your world. This is different. This is your own history changing. Don't tell me it's going to be okay. You have to make it okay. It's going to be hard, but you can do it, Amy. <laughs> tell me about Rory, huh? Fantastic Rory. Funny. Rory. Gorgeous Rory. Amy, listen to me. Do exactly as I say. Amy, please, keep concentrating. You can do this. I can't. You can. You can do it. I can't help you unless you do. Come on. We can still save his memory. Come on, Amy. Please. Come on, Amy. Come on. Amy, please. Don't let anything distract you. Remember, Rory. Keep remembering. Rory's only alive in your memory. You must keep hold of him. Don't let anything distract you. Rory still lives in your mind. What were you saying? 
So that was the backstory, and then this is the clip that I'd love to discuss with you today. Awesome. If Amy Pond can soldier on, then so can Vincent Van Gogh. I'm not soldiering on, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, Amy, I hear the song of your sadness. You've lost someone, I think. I'm not sad. Then why are you crying? It's all right. I understand. I'm not sure I do. Okay. Okay. So, now, we must have a plan. When the creature returns... Then we shall fight him again. Well, yes. Tick. But last night we were lucky. Amy could have been killed. So, this time, for a start, we have to make sure I can see him too. And how are we meant to do that suddenly? The answer is in this box. I had an excellent, if smelly, godmother. So those were my two clips. Mm -hmm. The, um, yeah, I know it's a sad story, isn't it? It's, um, the first clip is, of course, kind of the backstory about how Rory dies and then is actually deleted from the universe. And so that's why, mm -hmm. um, Amy forgets him. And then the second scene is actually the very next episode, and mm -hmm. the doctor's trying to cheer up Amy mm -hmm. by taking her to visit Vincent Van Gogh. And so um, I just think the scene is so poignant because it shows the sadness that can be in our soul even when we don't remember things. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I picked it, because it just really always stuck in my mind mm -hmm. how... Um, how the soul remembers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Those are those are good clips. Um, I think they're both kind of have a theme where it's just it's it's powerful and it's deep. It's touching on something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, deep down. You know, it's like when you in the first one when you see. Amy like frantic because yeah. um, she loves Rory so much yeah. and it's just it's also not to take away from it but comical mm -hmm. because you're throughout it you're wondering it's like so does Amy like Rory does Amy like the doctor and so it's like in this it's very clear that Amy is in love with Rory yeah. and that the doctor had to pull her away yeah. and it was also really just it was sweet to see how the doctor was doing what he needed to do mm -hmm. and get Amy out of there yeah. but was trying to do it in this loving and compassionate way mm -hmm. and a, like addressing her feelings yeah. of just it's like it's like there may be a way just try to hold on to your thoughts of of Rory and mm -hmm. um I really I, I love the Vincent episode and so um I like, I think the things that stuck out to me in that initially were just how, like, it took Vincent, who wasn't a, mm -hmm. a stranger to melancholy, yeah. to notice mm -hmm. that Amy was, was sad yeah. when, um, yeah. when she didn't notice it. Mm -hmm. And um, I also thought it's interesting because it's like you think, well, Amy's forgotten, mm -hmm. but it's like, has she? Because there's mm -hmm. a sadness there, yeah. and it's it wasn't the memory that you'd expect. I think when they were trying, when she was trying to remember, it's like, oh no, actually re remember him, but it mm -hmm. it came in a different way. It's like she missed that he wasn't there and could yeah. notice that he wasn't there. I thought that was a, a clever way to to show that she did at least remember him a little. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. I mean, there's so many things that come to mind about this clip. Um, one of the things is it's touching on decisions again, mm -hmm. like we talked about with your clip, and just about how the doctor had to make a difficult judgment call, like mm -hmm. in a split second. Mm -hmm. Does he allow Amy to stay with Rory because she wants to and she's grieving mm -hmm. and endanger her life, or mm -hmm. does, she, does he grab her and take her away against her wishes? And so I'm, I'm impressed by the doctor's strength in that because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it is sometimes difficult to make those split-second calls. Mm -hmm. And um, and the other thing that, that really 
touches me is again yeah kind of the sorrow that can be there when we don't even know it and I think it's easy sometimes when we have something that's really painful to just kind of shut down our emotions so I mean in our reality, we don't have people erased from the universe, right? But sometimes we have things happen that are so painful that we want to forget, or we try to forget. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we just kind of go numb. Mm -hmm. And we think, it's easy to think sometimes, I'm okay. And we can tell ourselves that. But there are moments when, when we are crying and we don't understand why. Mm -hmm. That That's kind of like the emotion leaking out, mm -hmm. I think, kind of like this clip. So I feel like it really reflects real life, even though this, the setting is mm -hmm. a little fantastical. I feel like it really touches on something very relatable. Yeah. And I think when you were talking about like loss and trying to forget, mm -hmm. I think there's also times where it's where we're grieving something, we have a loss, and we yeah. didn't even know it happened. Yeah. Like it catches us off guard yeah. that it's like, oh, why is this? upsetting me and there's this deeper level that you just mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. know about mm -hmm. and um the way you were mentioning about the doctor that he had a, a hard task to try to to help amy um just his compassion in that mm -hmm. when you know he knew what was happening and he he wasn't as you know on set with emotions and so he was kind of doing what he knew what was best for amy even though she didn't see it yeah. but then in this and a difference from from the clip we looked at before he, he had just a real softness mm -hmm. there the way he was kind of being forceful and gentle at mm -hmm. the same time yeah. and not ignoring amy but really focusing on her and listening to her even talking to her and just yeah. getting what needed to happen done escaping but at the same time not losing sight of what's mm -hmm. important um i think that really speaks to their their connection as mm -hmm. as friends mm -hmm. yeah that's really true and i think it's so precious even the next episode is him trying to cheer her up because he mm -hmm. knows he sees the sadness even though she isn't aware yeah. necessarily of what, and isn't that what a good friend like yeah i feel like a, I feel like a good friend can come beside you and mirror to you what's going on in you that you're not even aware of right and then take care of you in that place right yeah. so he comes alongside of her and he he understands where she is in a way that she doesn't even understand what's mm -hmm. going on inside her and then meets her need mm -hmm. right he's like I'm gonna try to, to cheer her up. Mm -hmm. And all of that is without even her really understanding. And mm -hmm. I just love that picture of what a good friend does. Cause there've been times, you know, I, I haven't even understood what's going on in myself, but a good friend or a family member, yeah. they see me sometimes better than I can see myself and yeah. have loved me in that place and supported me in a way I didn't really even realize I needed in that moment yeah. until later. Yeah. I think that's just really beautiful. That is, I, th I think, to your point there, it's like there are so many times we're unaware of, of what we're feeling just because, you know, we have a constant monologue inside our heads mm -hmm. of what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And we're not sure how much of that is visible to the outside world. So when we have, like, good friends who kind of know our cues without us even saying things, I think that is just a very special yeah. connection. I know, you know, it's like... It's just, it's a beautiful feeling when you have a friend and, you know, it's like you're down or you're grieving and they just kind of, mm -hmm. they meet you in that place. Yeah. They don't try to, to change you yeah. in that place, but they just meet you in that place and sit with you mm -hmm. in that, um, yeah. just as you're, you're processing mm -hmm. and, and while you're, you're, you know, while you're stuck and or moving through yeah. that sadness, um, like they're there with you. They might not know how to, to fix it or they're not able to fix it, but um, when someone's willing to 
be there and just sit with you and take that take that time mm -hmm. um it's neat that in this this clip that they're they do have like now they have time mm -hmm. after rory um disappears it's like they have the time to take a to take a breath and the doctor like you said plans his itinerary to to cheer yeah amy up and that he uh knows that you know it's like oh it will be helpful to go see vincent van gogh and he's like knowing it's like well maybe i don't have what it mm. you know it it takes to bring this out but i yeah. know something someone else that will help that is just so selfless it's not it's like well, i want to be the one to to fix amy and i'm all powerful and i can fix the situation he takes her to see someone who's walked through the things that she's mm. walking through oh, i love that john that's such mm. an excellent point mm. yeah how many times do we want to fix people right mm -hmm. sometimes we don't sometimes we can't mm -hmm. or sometimes we're not the best person it reminds me of something i've heard as well that you know when you talk about vincent having walked through it uh, sometimes it feels discouraging when you think about like, oh gosh, I've been through so many things and why mm -hmm. is this happening or why is that happening? Um, but I love this perspective that I heard from someone else, which is that when you walk through something, you gain authority in that area. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then that helps you to help other people with the thing that you've walked through. Mm -hmm. So kind of alluding to how Vincent would be a good choice to help her because he's yeah. walked through depression. He's walked through yeah. melancholy and grief and sadness. And so, um, so yeah, I often think of that when I think of trials because I think they really are redemptive. Everything mm -hmm. that we walk through gives us, kind of almost levels us up, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not a loss. Right. So those who have lost somebody they they have something to offer other people who have lost someone that like if you haven't experienced that you don't necessarily have those tools yeah and so i, I just love the redemptive nature of that that suffering isn't pointless there's always this yeah. beautiful um benefit that comes yeah out of suffering and out of grief and out of difficult times yeah um, if you allow it to, yeah. if you allow yourself to be um, just healed and become whole through that, then mm. you have a gift to offer the world in that area. So that always just encourages my heart. No. <laughs> yeah. I remember something my parents teaching me when I was little, which is like when you're um, going through a hard time, one of the best things you can do to help yourself not to feel so bad is actually to bear somebody else's burden. And what you just said mm -hmm. reminds me of that principle. Like wow. uh, sometimes it just helps to look at somebody else and to carry, it's like carrying somebody else's burden lessens your own. I don't mm -hmm. know how that works, but it right. seems, it seems to really, yeah. seems to really work. And um, it's hard sometimes because I yeah. think when we're suffering, there's a tendency to turn inward yeah. and just to focus. I mean, I definitely am guilty of this, like just focus on myself and my pain. But if I can turn outward and f help somebody else with their yeah. pain and carry their burden, it really, it really can help me um, with whatever I'm going through. And so it's just a good reminder to do that. Yeah. Because I don't think it's necessarily a, a natural <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's so true. Just it's um I've heard something similar. It's like if there's something mm -hmm. that you're you're struggling with, meet that need in someone else. So like say like yeah. if you're experiencing loneliness, maybe buy a bouquet of flowers and drop mm -hmm. it off for someone yeah. and um just in that way God will often meet like your needs while you're yeah. extending grace and provision like in in your suffering mm -hmm. and i think what you were talking about it's like it just it helps it helps change your perspective and it helps get get yourself out of your own head and look at what's happening around you yeah. and that can not to diminish what you're you're going through but it can help give perspective and help you see what you're going through mm -hmm. that you can 
get through it yeah. that it's not it's not just black and white and all be all that this is cataclysmic but that it can it can get you through that and give you perspective and when you're helping someone else if that gives you like a little jolt of help mm -hmm. then maybe that hope will help propel you on yeah on more it makes me think of like just a, a picture of like you know two people who are hurting kind of maybe like in a in a swamp or a mire but like holding on to each other and walking each other forward and so by helping each other you're both making progress to help get to a, a lighter place. Yeah, that's good. It, it makes you feel like you're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, I'm not in this by myself. There's somebody mm -hmm. else who's experienced. Sometimes that can be so validating just to know I'm not the only one experiencing this. Right. Yeah. I think of the law of, I don't know, it's called different things by different religions, the law of karma or the law of sowing and reaping. But going back to what you're saying about if you need something, offer that to another person. I think that's a great principle to remember. When mm. we do need something, if you sow that something that you need in somebody else, it really is a principle that that comes back to you mm. in a fuller measure. Mm. And so, um, so that's a really good reminder. Thanks for bringing mm. that up. Oh, you're welcome. What you were saying about... You, um, that just reminded me of it, of just of of stepping outside yourself and mm -hmm. and focusing on on someone else's need, what your parents mm -hmm. taught you. Was there anything else that stuck out with you in the clip, John? One thing that that did stick stick out to me was um, just Amy's vulnerability. Mm -hmm. She tends to be kind of a a stubborn person, which is admirable. Um, yeah. She's a really cool character, and um, just that just to see her cry is meaningful yeah. because she doesn't cry often mm -hmm. and it lets you know what's important to her. She's mm -hmm. not, not that she's, she's somewhat guarded with her feelings, but just being open about, about Rory. And just even when, when Vincent questions her about seeing her crying, she doesn't, she discounts it a little bit, but she doesn't yeah. push him away and say that, no, that's not happening at all. Let's, let's not talk about it. Um, so that vulnerability stuck out to me. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, because I don't traditionally think of Amy as being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is kind of a rare moment of where you get to see her heart. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, and thanks for joining us and joining in on the conversation of just scenes that we liked in Doctor Who. If you have any thoughts from the scenes we watched or if there are other scenes that you like in Doctor Who, please feel free to drop a comment um, below. And thank you so much for joining in. We really appreciate it. And this was a lot of fun. Take care and we'll see you later.